plumberparts.co.uk. Honest reviews and advice. Not quite ready for that yet, believe me. Welcome to today's plumberparts.co.uk video. Today we're going to be looking at the insane world of how to inhibit pressurised heating systems. It's a lot more fun than getting in a pool that's only 10 degrees because things happen to men and women, I imagine, when you get in pools that cold. Anyway, enjoy, hold tight. Before we start, make sure that the system is fully turned off and make sure that it is cold and down to room temperature. Right, the first thing you should do is familiarise yourself with a pressurised heating system. What we've got here is the expansion vessel. We've got our filling loop here and this is the main system. First thing and most importantly is dissipate the pressure in the heating system. The first thing you do is make sure that you've the cold feed to the system is turned off and that the braid is removed. Once that's removed we're fortunate because we've got a high pressure relief valve here that dumps the outside we can dissipate the pressure there but a lot of the time you need to find a drain off on the system get a hose open up the drain off until it reads naught on here and then shut the drain off again. So I'm just going to do that here now. This is a big system here so we're going to be putting about five or six tubs of inhibitor in. Right, we're reading about naught now on the pressure gauge. All we need to do now is find a radiator that we can put our inhibitor into. So let's do that. Right, here's the radiator in question, but we're also in a room full of wildlife. Don't get me wrong, I know they're caged animals, but they could be man-eaters. This is the radiator we're going to do here. Why I've chosen this radiator is because it's got an easily removed key. Now, what I'm going to do is use what's called a half-inch male threaded insert to go and connect from my injector bottle here, because I've got that on there, I made this myself because I use these all the time into our radiator. Now a lot of the time when you guys buy inhibitor you might have aerosol inhibitor or something like that. What you'd have to do there, you'd have to remove the pin out altogether and then screw a small plastic insert, it looks like a tiny tiny spout or nozzle and you have to screw that right in, just screw it all the way as well because they can leak. But for this one here all we need to do first is just turn off the TRV at this end and turn off the lock shield at the other end. So let's do that now. Now we've got these two valves off, we just need to make sure that they're holding. A good way to do that, get yourself a radiator bleed key and just open that up. Brilliant, so now we know that that is holding. Now at this point, either you'll take out your small screw and put your nozzle in like I said, or what I'm going to do is remove the whole of this insert here. This is my preferred method because you get the most amount of inhibitor in really. Right, nice and quick and just swap that over like that. Give that a quick wipe. Now you notice I use a HEP 2 fit in there so that means I can hold that and then twist that up really quick. So all we need to do now is just pressurise this side, the radiator side, before we open our valve up. So just get pumped in a couple of times. And then we can open this up, this valve here, and we'll hear our inhibitor flying into the system. Great, that's brilliant. Now all we need to do is keep on pumping. Keep, keep pushing, keep, keep pushing. Nah. What we're going to do is we're going to carry on pushing in until we actually start pushing air into the radiator. The idea being is we keep pushing air in and it pushes air about halfway down the rad. Then we can dissipate the pressure out and then nothing will come out when we're finished. We can shut the valve and everything. I'll show you in a sec. Well, we're starting to take a little bit of air now. That's great. Right, keep pushing in at least 10 more pushes, at least 10, of air. Just keep pushing the air in. 10, I'm going to go 10 more I think. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Right, now what we do is this. We shut our radiator valve. Remember the other end's still closed, we haven't opened that up yet. And then on every one of these, even on this particular type or any of the main brands, you'll have something that can dissipate the pressure. So open that up. Now, because we pumped all that extra air into the radiator, we're not getting any of our inhibitor out. So now we're ready to remove our actual inhibitor injector from the radiator. Yet again, you wanna be nice and quick here. Just get your towel, shove that under there so we can catch any of the water because sometimes there's a tiny, tiny little dribble comes out. It's just best to be prepared. Bang, straight over like that. Tighten up our bleed insert, shut our key, or at this point, put your key back if you've been using an injector nozzle, and then open this valve up. Now you open up the other end of the radiator, and then we'll go back down to the boiler house. But sometimes before you go back to the boiler house, you might be a bit lucky and have some pressure in for what you've just put in, and just try and bleed that air out. 
There we go, that's all coming out now. Brilliant. Now all we need to do is go back down to the boiler house and repressurize. Sometimes after repressurize, we have to go around the radiators and make sure that they're all bled out. Let's go down and repressurize the system now. Right, so we're back in here now. All we need to do is reconnect our filling loop. As you can see, we've still got a little bit of pressure in here from when we injected our stuff earlier on. And then turn it on and pressurize up to cold pressure of one bar. There's one bar there, just move that up. Beautiful. Now, when we turn the system on, it should pressurize up to about one and a half bar, but that'll be totally within its tolerance. It'll be really, really happy. Remember, when you finish any work with a pressurized heating system, to remove the flexible filling loop. Otherwise, it might accidentally fill itself up, and we don't want that. All you need to do now is reinstate your heating system, bleed some radiators if they need bleeding, and then turn the heating system back on, and that will start to circulate all the inhibitor you've just put in. Right, I hope you've enjoyed today's plumberparts.co.uk video. If you need any more help or any more information, as ever, visit our website. And of course, you can subscribe as well. That's most important to get more info. Remember to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. You can click on those icons there and take you straight to it. If you need any more help, just comment on this video, okay? Just to say, we do loads of stuff on Twitter. We retweet loads of pictures you guys send us of the absolute nightmares that you guys come up against because some of the work is, let's face it, atrocioso, as they say in, um, in Italy or Spain. Anyway, I'll see you next week's video. I hope you enjoy yourselves for the week and I hope it gets a bit warmer. Remember, am I going to dive in there? Am I going to jump in there right now for the clothes? Hmm, we'll see. Remember, hold tight. Plumberparts.co.uk Honest reviews and advice.